بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنى عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم وقاتلوا المشركين كافة كما يقاتلونكم كافة وعلموا أن الله مع المتقين وربي عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال أفضل الصيام بعد رمضان صيام شهر الله المحرم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رواه مسلم Dear friends, today I sit before you on a Friday a Friday which is, a, which is not like any other Friday today is the first of Muharram and the new Islamic year 1442 starts from today. The start of a new Islamic year is not something that the Prophet ﷺ or his companions celebrated. In fact, when we talk about the Islamic calendar, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Islamic calendar did not even exist. The Prophet ﷺ organized the dates and the months and confirm them only at the time of his farewell hajj. Prior to that, the Prophet wasallam, he did not really talk about, the, about organizing the calendar. In fact, when we look at the Islamic calendar, it has 12 months, starting from the month of Muharram and ending all the way until, the, until Zul Hijjah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned them by the names that they had. Like there's a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that in عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا That there are, I've read the ayat and there's a similar, the similar words, there's a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that the, the count of the, the number of months in a year according to Allah Azza wa Jal in the eyes of Allah is 12. And out of them, he ﷺ said, مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ Four from amongst them are sacred. ثَلَاثَةٌ mutawaliyatun or mutawaliyatun. Three of them are consecutive one after the other. And thereafter the Prophet ﷺ mentions them by their name. He mentions Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. And then he says, and there's a Rajab, um, Rajab Muda. So he talks about, he mentions the month of Rajab later on. In, in that same hadith, so he mentions four months by their names. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. So, and the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned the month of Ramadan. It's mentioned in the Quran Kareem as well. These are names that were given to these months not by the Prophet ﷺ or his companions. These names were to, 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 for, for these months were used even uh, amongst Arabs that, that lived there in, in a pre Islam era. It is said that out of the 12 months, the month of Muharram is unique in a sense that the, the, the name Muharram was given to it by the Prophet ﷺ, by Muslims. As a, as a result of the divine revelation, the Almighty Allah Azza wa called it Muharram. As the Prophet, he, he revealed it in the, the, under the instructions of the Almighty Allah Azza wa the Prophet ﷺ called it Muharram. Otherwise, Arabs used had, had a different name for it. They called it Safar al-Awwal, just like we have Jumad al-Awwal and Jumad al-Thaniya, and we have Rabi'u al-Awwal and Rabi'u al-Thani. Similarly, they had Safar al-Awwal and Safar al-Thani. They would, they would call the month of Muharram as Safar al-Awwal. But the Prophet ﷺ replaced it with a name other than what, they, the, the, what, what they, they had for it. He called it Muharram. Not only that he called it Muharram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also called it a very special month. He said, Shahrullah al-Muharram. This is a month of Allah. Now, calling it a month of Allah makes it very special and very unique. Just like we have Baytullah, the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, Kalamullah, the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. Similarly, Shahrullah makes them, this month very special. The Prophet 
When he called it Shahrullah al Muharram, Sahaba understood its virtue. And then the Prophet, they also know, observed that the Prophet would make an effort to fast during this month. The Prophet also said that uh, the hadith that I read earlier, that the most sacred or most virtuous fasting in any month that, that, that carries that, 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 that is virtuous, that carries more virtue than any other time, the most virtuous fasting in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal, other than that which is done during the month of Ramadan, is the fasts that are observed during this month of Allah al Muharram. So <clears throat> the way Muslims celebrated this month, the way the Prophet ﷺ celebrated this month was that he would frequently observe fast during this month. And he would say that other than the month of Ramadan, this is the month in which, fasting in which, carries most virtue. And it, it is more virtuous than any other time of the year, other than the month of Ramadan. Obviously, the month of Ramadan is a very special month. So you can't compete against the month of Ramadan. But other than, and out with the month of Ramadan, something that carries a lot of virtue, or more virtue, is the, any fast that is kept during the month of Muharram. And remember, any fast, that does not mean a specific fast, or fast of a specific day. It means any fast that, that's done throughout the month. So starting from today, for another 29 or 30, 30 days, make an effort to fast as often as you can. Even though the Prophet ﷺ never observed fast for the whole month of Muharram. Other, he only, when he came to fasting, for the, he, the, if he ever fasted for a whole month, that was during the month of Ramadan. Other than, with, other than the month of Ramadan, during the month of Muharram, he ﷺ encouraged Sahaba to fast, but not that he would, uh, and, and, no, no, not that he would fast throughout. So he would do iftar on a number of days. So as a sunnah, you're not supposed to fast for the 29 days. But you're supposed to fast for most of the days, and because this is this pleases the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And out of all the all, all, out of all the days, fasting on the tenth of Muharram is specifically virtuous, carries more virtue. The Prophet Wasallam said that Inni Arju, I have I hope that this is such a significant and blessed day, the tenth of Muharram, that anyone who observes fast on this day, his sins of the past year will be forgiven and to kaffir sanat al madiyah the previous year's sins will be forgiven and sahaba say rizwanullah ajma'in that we noticed we observed that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would never take as much care of about fasting and he wouldn't he never demonstrated as much zeal and concern for fasting of a day that was more than, that, than what he demonstrated for this 10th of Muharram fast, fasting of the, month, of, of the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram. Now, these names and these terms, they existed during the life of the Prophet The calendar was not organized as, as such. The, in fact, the Islamic calendar, the first of Hijrah and second of Hijrah, and we talk about Events that happened during the life of the Prophet ﷺ, for instance, we say that Ramadan was, the month of Ramadan, fasting for the month of Ramadan was, was recommended and was made as part of law, was ordained in the second year of Hijrah. Hajj was ordained in the ninth year of Hijrah. And we talk about, we talk about these things. But we, so there's a second year of Hijrah, something happened in the ninth year, and we talk about the Battle of Badr happened in the second year of Hijrah. The Qibla from Mecca, from, the, from Al-Quds to the Kaaba was changed in the second year of Hijrah. Sayyidina uh, Hassan radiallahu anhu was born in the third year after Hijrah. Sayyidina Hussein radiallahu anhu was born in the fourth year after Hijrah. So we talk about years, but first, second, third, fourth, fifth, ninth, eighth, ninth, tenth, this was, these were not known as such by, the, by, by, by people during the life of the Prophet It was only subsequently, during the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, when, when confusion arose in regards to events, what, what had happened, the orders or the instructions by the Khalifa that, that, that were issued, which one was the final one and which one should be taken as the, as, as the relevant one, in order to, so they had to, to have, to, they, they, they needed to, to, to give a sequence to everything that came from the from the from the Amir al-Mu'mineen, from the commander of the believers. 
So in order to, 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 to give that structure and to create that sequence, they, had, they, had to, they, they, they needed a calendar. So they had to start from a point. So they sat down and they pondered over it. And they decided that they should start their, their calendar from the year when the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca Mukarramah to Medina Munawwara. So from the year of Hijrah, the Islamic calendar, they decided that we should start the Islamic calendar from the year of Hijrah. I'll leave that to you to, to ponder over. Why was it that, why was Hijrah such a phenomenal event, such an important event that, had, that was given precedence over the year when the Prophet ﷺ appointed a Nabi by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, when he first had when he first had an encounter with Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, or the year when he was taken to Mi'raj, to, to the seven heavens, or to any other important event in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, why was it that, the, that they considered it to be the year when the Islamic calendar should start from? I'll leave that to you to, to, to ponder over and think, think about. That is not my subject for today. Today, what I'm trying to to highlight is that Shahrullah al Muharram. The Prophet ﷺ, when he called it the year or the, the month of Allah, it came again its 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 prominence in the eyes of Sahaba as one Allah Ajma'in. And this was in so so they, they, they made an effort in order to encourage Sahaba to fast during, during this month, the Prophet ﷺ called it Shahrullah. And this was the this was what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we see in his life. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is how he encouraged Sahaba. He would connect and link things with the Almighty Allah, and he would say, "This is what Allah says. This is what Allah wants. This is how Allah azza wa would like to see it." And Sahaba ridwanum ajma'in would give their lives for it. And the, and, the, and this is something that that the Almighty praises in the Quran. That وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Those who have belief for they are the firmest and the most strong and the most powerful and most, most passionate in regards to their love for Allah Azza wa Jal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he built his entire life around connecting people with their creator. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his the last day of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Monday, the twelfth of Rabiul Awwal, the year tenth after Hijrah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lifts the curtain at Fajr times. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam lifts the curtain of his of his hujra of his chamber for the final time, for the last time. He lifts the chamber, and the final glance that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had over his companions was when Sahaba were engaged in their Fajr salah. One of them was leading. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq who was leading. <coughs> and they all stood in rows behind, behind their, their imam. And the imam was reciting Kalamullah. The, 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 the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. And people behind him, they were standing, their heads bowed to, to, their, to their Lord. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِدِينَ They were standing still in humility, showing utmost, utmost respect to their creator even though they couldn't see him, even though they couldn't hear him. But they, were, they had firm yaqeen and they, were, they had firm conviction that he, he heard them, that the Creator saw what they were doing and that the Creator was aware of what they, were, what they were doing. And the Creator was listening to what they were saying. And with that kind of conviction and certainty, they stood and having sacrificed their sleep and they stood before their Lord in obedience in straight, straight rows behind one imam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had this final glance over his ummah, over his people, over his sahaba, over his companions. And he was delighted and he was pleased. It is mentioned that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he looked at them, his face shone like a, like, like, like a page of the Quran al Kareem, the sahabi compares it, compares it with. So it was like a yellowish color because of the because of the, the overwhelming illness and the weakness that the Prophet ﷺ was suffering from. And he looked at the Ummah for the final time and he was pleased and he was happy and he was content and he was satisfied that he had created a community that were devout to their Creator and they had love for Allah Azza wa Jal and this was their main objective and main goal. So Rasulullah ﷺ, he left Ummah 
having connected them with Allah. So anything where the name of Allah was mentioned, Shahrullah al Muharram, that just 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 that mention that this is a month of Allah made it important in the eyes of Sahaba to fast. It was such an it became such an important thing. Say the Aisha Dilanha says that even before Islam came, the the, the, the Arabs uh, during the age of ignorance and jahiliya, the Arabs used to observe fast of the of of the of during this month. So they considered that this month was a month where in which they should fast. In fact, they would fast during the ninth and the tenth of 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 the month. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was accustomed to it. He observed this practice in in Makkah Mukarramah. After Hijrah, after migration, when he comes to Medina, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He noticed that the people in Medina, particularly the Jewish community, they made extra effort to observe fast on this day. Now, this brings us to this understanding that the people of Mecca were aware of what was happening, what was happening to the to, to Banu Ishaq. Now, people of Mecca were children of Ismail alayhi salam. And Ismail alayhi salam, his brother Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam, was in Al-Quds. He was in, in Palestine, in Beit al-Maqdis region. And both brothers and their families were connected and linked. They would visit one, day, one another. They would draw benefit from the wisdom and from the divine revelations that, were, that, that, that was revealed unto them. When we talk about Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, Allah, in fact, told Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, as he mentioned in, in, in the Quran al-Kareem, that Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam on his deathbed, he gathered his sons. And amongst them was Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. And this is happening in Egypt. And Allah Ta'ala says there, the Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam asked his children, Sayyidina Yusuf and the other 12 asbat, he asked them, ma ta'abuduna min ba'di? Who will you worship after me, after I'm gone? They said, na'abudu ilaha. Allah Ta'ala mentions this in the Quran, I'm reciting verses of the Quran Kareem before you. Qalu na'abudu ilahak. وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ They mentioned three names there. Yeah, Yusuf alayhi salam and his other siblings, his brothers. They are saying to their father, who's on his deathbed, Yaqub alayhi salam, they are saying, our father will continue to worship the same Lord that was worshipped by you and by your, by your, your forefathers. And then they mentioned the names of the forefathers, Ibrahim, first name, ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu was salam, Ismail, even before mentioning Ishaq, they say, Ismail, he's the older of the two brothers, of Ishaq amongst Ismail and Ishaq alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam is the older. And then they mentioned the younger brother, Ishaq alayhi salam, ilahaka wa ilaha abaika, Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq, ilahum wahidan wa nahum lahu muslimun. So, Whatever was happening to, to the cousins in, 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 the, in, the, in the family of Sayyidina Ishaq alayhi salatu was salam and the family of Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam, the, the brothers over here, their cousins in Mecca, they were aware and they would share, they would exchange information. And because of that, it is said that Arabs would fast the, the, on, during the month of Muharram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when in, in Mecca, he noticed that amongst the Arab pagan culture, amongst the, the, the Jahiliya tradition, one was that they would have they would show, they would show a degree of regard to the month of Muharram. But when then the Prophet ﷺ comes to Medina, and there he shows that same things happening amongst the, the Jewish. So if it was a pagan culture in Mecca, the Jewish they were Ahlul Kitab. Why were they doing it? From 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 these even historical events. Some of the some of the some of the the scholars, I think Izzud, uh, Izz ibn Abdul Salam, rahimahullah, and some other scholars, they have concluded, they have suggested that it seems that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam revealed instructions and divine uh, divine guidance in regards to the month of Muharram in the final years of his life. In early years of his life, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not receive any direct instructions about in regards to, 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 to the virtue of the entire month of Muharram. In fact, when it comes to fasting on the 10th of Muharram, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam expressed his desire that if I live until next year, I will fast not only the 10th, but I'll fast also on the 9th. 
But then the Prophet ﷺ passed away prior to that. So because of that, the scholars, Muslim scholars, have some of them have mentioned, they've suggested that it seems that in early years of Rasulullah ﷺ's life, there weren't any clear instructions given to him about the entire month. However, subsequently the Prophet ﷺ was made aware of it and he ﷺ made desire and he, he, he expressed his desire and he ﷺ suggested that this is how Muslims should do it. So he suggested ﷺ, that Muslims should fast not only in the 10th of the Hijj, uh, 10th of Muharram, but also on the 9th of Muharram. So not just one month. But he, he himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throughout his life, observed fast only on the 10th. Because of this, the ulama have also said that it is recommended that an, an individual should fast on both days, 9th and 10th. And if he's not able to fast for one reason or the other on the 9th, he should do 10th and the 11th. But if one is not able to fast for the two days, then even fasting for one day shouldn't be taken lightly. One should, even if you can fast just for one day, make an effort to do that. So it's not necessary, absolutely vital, that if you can't do two, then you shouldn't do it. No. If you can't do two for one reason or the other, at least do one. However, make an effort to do two. So ninth and tenth, or tenth alone, maybe, as a last resort, but you can do 9th and 10th, or 10th and 11th. So, but ideally, you should do two. If not, then, in fact, ideally, you should do most of the month. But if you can't do most of the month, then the second is that you do 9th, 10th, 10th, or 11th. If you can't do even the, this, then just 9th. Sahaba radiallahu anhum were so keen to observe this fast that it is said that they would make even their children fast on this day. And the, 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 the smaller children, the younger babies, that were still was being suckled by the mothers, they, they would, obviously the children, they, the babies would have no idea about fasting. But the mothers would try, would try and keep them busy with other toys. So they wouldn't, they would kind of not really, they would really not uh, be suckled. They wouldn't ask for, 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 for to, to, be, to be suckled until after iftar time. So they would keep them busy, but they would they wanted they wanted their children to earn that barakah and that blessing too. So this was happening during the life of the Prophet. And prior to that, in the previous cultures as well, amongst the amongst the Jewish and amongst the amongst the those who had inherited the legacy of Sayyidina Ibrahim. So there is something that historically important, historically virtuous about this day. And that is then elaborated by it mentioned, in, in, it confirmed in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa too. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he inquired from the Jewish, Ahlul Kitab, the, their reason and motive for fasting on this day, the reply he received was, it was, it is because this is the time of the year, this is the time, this is the day of the year, wherein the Almighty Allah Azza wa rescued Musa alayhi salatu wa salam from Pharaoh. And from Coptics, the Israelites won their freedom. So we celebrate this day. People of Khaybar would, would, would have a festival. They would kind, their women would, would wear the best jewelry, men would wear the best, best clothes. Just they, they would treat it like the day of Eid. The Prophet wasallam suggested that, that you are not, you, 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 you have, you're carrying the legacy of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet wasallam said, Musa alayhi salam, we have more, we are more entitled, we deserve more to carry the legacy of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And the shukr that Musa alayhi salatu was salam did, the, the offering that he made, we are, we deserve more to, to keep that tradition. So he sallallahu alayhi wa himself observed fast and the other companions did it too. So let's bring it to the conclusion. Shahrullah al-Muharram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talked about its virtue and its importance and significance because this is the time, because this would make Sahaba interested and zealous. And this would... This would make them passionate about taking this month seriously. So make dua. We, we all pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to fill our hearts and mind for his, for his mahabbat and for his love to, to an extent that whenever something is linked and connected with his blessed name, we, 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 we increase in love for it. And we also pray to the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal to fill our hearts and minds to... To, to such an extent that we then become from amongst those whom the Almighty Allah Azza wa has praised in the Quran as they are Ibadul Rahman, that the servants of the most blessed Lord, may Allah Azza wa make all of us from amongst them 
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين